What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Digital Agency Hacker, guys. I'm super pumped up today because I got uh, not only a friend, but a mentor, a coach, someone. We actually were just doing the calculations for literally two years. Kevin has been my go-to guy with how in the world am I scaling, growing? What are we doing wrong? What are we screwing up? Super excited to be talking to my good friend, Kevin Lau, today, guys, about, about hiring and and, and building a team and scaling and what should we be looking for, right? So what's up, Kevin? How's it going, brother? What's going on, sir? Good to see you. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, bro. And before we get started, guys, so how long have you been with Google? How many years now? It'll be 10 years in July. 10 years in Google working on the ad side and then most recently on the Android side working with television and uh, had an amazing career there. I've been trying to get Kevin to leave Google forever. He is like, I mean, bleeds the rainbow of Google <laughs> colors. So this guy, he's incredible, incredible guys. So Kevin, bro, I know we were talking earlier, right? Hiring specifically for experience versus hiring for potential. Yes. What do you mean by that? Let's talk about it. Yeah. I, you know, first things first, I think, you know, hiring, hiring great people is, is something that we all strive to do. You know, we, we know that the cost of a bad hire um, can, can, can set the wrong trajectory for the business unit, for the organization. Culturally, um, there's a lot of implications when you make the wrong hire. And so um, recently I've been looking at hiring and I, I, I mentor uh, students from across the country. And I see a lot of I see a lot of I see a lot of really great the conversations they're having with hiring managers and recruiters. And I also see the other end of it where it's. It, the rejection letters and things of that nature. And often it boils down to the being able to sell your experience versus being able to sell your potential experience being mm. what you've done in the past, your studies, the work, the jobs you've held, the internships you've had, and how that can add value to an organization in the future versus potential where let's say someone doesn't have the experience, doesn't have the work experience, but they possess so much potential that could benefit the organization and maybe in ways that are may not be tangible just yet. And so the question, the ultimate question is how do you balance the two? How do you find someone who has the right blend of experience, but also more importantly can add value to the organization and it has huge upside uh, to, to the hiring process. So let's, let's, I don't know which, which way is easier. Let's go from a corporate standpoint first, and then we'll back into like what it looks like sure. as a team member or, sure. or someone looking for a job. You know, I'm building my agency. I'm growing. What's more important to me, potential or experience? I, I, I would assume in most cases, experience is going to be a lot more expensive. Is it worth it? Is it not? What should we be looking for? I don't know. Yeah. What, what are you thinking? Yeah, I know. I mean, we we just we, I think I think you hit it on the head when we were talking in the pre-call where, you know, we when you're just starting something new, we have a brand new organization, brand new business unit, to surround yourself with people that have experience in establishing new things that can just define process that can that can be can can reference previous situations where they had to start something from the ground up or they saw something that had to be rescued because it wasn't set up in the right way i mean that type of experience is invaluable incredibly mm -hmm. invaluable when when you're building something from the from the ground up the question is when is the tipping point when do you start hiring folks for potential to kind of the build off of the experience that's already been established for a future that hasn't yet been defined. Um, you, know, I, you know, we, we often look at experience and say, Hey, the last 10, 20 years, this is, you know, this person brings in X, Y, and Z, this is great, but the world is going to be different in the next 10, 20 years. And so we need people that we should be looking for candidates that, can help us be more forward thinking, can, that can help, help us diversify. Um, and I think when you hire for potential, you're also hiring for inclusion. And I think that's also a really, a really good thing. Yeah. With, is there, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, obviously budget comes into this, right? Like, oh yeah. I, oh, I yeah. never recommend an agency to spend more money than where they, they know they can, you know, know they can provide, right? And so obviously if you've got a $3,000 budget, I'm not going to get a lot of experience here, but there's even a difference, right? Like 
let's, let's say you do have a budget and it's more about finding the right fit and, and the actual investment of it. You have, you have different types of experience, right? You have the technical experience, which is ever changing, ever going. Right. And then you have the leadership, the management, the decision-making experience, you know, being able to look at numbers and look at data and look at projections and things like this, right. For agencies, especially those just getting started, what do you think is the most, the most important thing there, the tactical or, <laughs> or the, the, I don't know, the, the business mind, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, again, like life cycles to matter, right? The context here is important. You know, brand new, yeah. you do, you, you having the technical expertise is, is great from the ground up, especially when it comes to, you know, velocity, just getting things rocking and rolling, being able to see movement. I think that's super important from the get go. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I, I live in a world too, where things can be coached, where if you hire someone that has proven to be coachable, if you hire someone that has proven to be resilient and someone who can understand con complex concepts and be able to exercise and comprehend them in a way that makes sense to others. I mean, that's who you really want. You know, you want, you want that person because that person has more flexibility, more potential mm -hmm. could possibly insulate yourself from future changes that could happen in the yeah. marketplace, whether you can control them or not. Um, but I think the first few, yes, I, I totally empathize with that, with that strategy of hiring for technical expertise from the get go, but we should do, we should try to find ways to hire folks that can help us see more potential and help us innovate. Yeah. I like to, at height, I feel like we're, we're, this formula is always changing. Right. And, and now we're at a point where we're pretty much everyone comes in, in entry level roles. And if you have a ton of experience, it's actually harder to get on height because we're so dedicated to our internal team. I mean, you have to really be 10 X our next best person in order to come on because we, we value that experience and the tenure and the growing up with us and learning how we, we work. And I, I'm almost like, um, you know, we were talking about this before, how I think someone has to be the expert. I think, I think when you, you hire versus experience, I think maybe has a, uh, equals expertise, right? Experience yep. expertise. We'll, we'll yep. throw those in together. I think someone has to be the expert either for whatever role I'm hiring. Let's say I need a salesperson. If I suck at sales, the importance of me hiring an expert is, is dramatically increased, right? Because I don't know how to coach them. I don't know how to mentor them. I don't know how to help them, you know, do their job effectively. So I need someone who either has dramatic abilities to learn fast, but ideally someone with experience, right? Mm -hmm. Versus JC's hella good at sales, right? Okay. Now I can hire for a potential because I'm going to be leading this person and helping them and guiding them and molding them and pushing them, pushing them forward. Right. Yeah. So how I does think, this all yeah. go ahead? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was going to say like in, from a sales point of view, which is, you know, the world that I like to live in, um, uh -huh. you know, the biggest, the, the, the largest component of being able to influence like others to, to sign, to join it's really about establishing credibility. Like that's that's really the, the 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 cornerstone of any type of really strong influencer, which is really in sales. Like you're you're trying to influence someone yeah. who to consider something they hadn't ever done before. That's that's yeah. that's the essence, right? And when you break it down, credibility is really two things. It's it's relationships. Like are they able to build rapport, build trust, um, show empathy, be intimate? In, some, in a professional in a professional sense with that client in a, in a fast way. Like, do they have those skills, those human skills, not soft skills, I'm trying to say I'm human skills to do that. So that's, mm -hmm. so that's like one end that's super important. The other end though is, just, is this expertise aspect. It's like, um, does this person possess the skills, whether through education or through experience? Uh, you, can, you can learn it, you can outsource it, you know, there's other, there's ways you can gain that expertise, but you need both expertise and relationships to really drive that credibility. And in most situations, you experience does lend itself because people can tell by the, by what you say, how you say it, the confidence, your tone, your pace, those are the things that breed confidence in a, in a sales conversation. And so in that particular role, I think that's super important. Mm. How do you even, um, you know, I think a big thing in our world right now is VAs, hiring a, v, a, a VA, which I hate the word, but we're going to call it that for the sake of most people use that term. 
hiring VAs, how do you even know if they have experience? You know, like people talk a big game on Facebook and LinkedIn and all this stuff, right? Like, how do you know that they're even going to be good? You know, uh, especially if, if, Hey, I'm not an expert in this. I'm hiring a team member because I don't know how to do accounting. How do I know this stuff? How are you judging this? Is there, have you seen, is there a way maybe, I don't know, for companies to have friends or, or family interview them that maybe do have the experience there? Mm, I don't uh, do judge expertise. Yeah, that's a good, this is a good question. Uh, I, I, I'm curious, let me throw it back to you. Like, what is, what, when you think of, when you, when you, when you're saying VA, uh, what is, what, uh -huh. like, give me, give me some context as to like what you feel yeah. that that is. Well, most of, uh, right now, a big thing is finding people in India, Nicaragua, Latin America, all these places, we're calling them VAs. And really what people are saying when they're talking about VAs is cheap labor. Like they're, they're going out and firing some, hiring someone, you know, they're not, they're, there's no benefits associated. There's no retirement. There's typically no opportunities to level up and grow in the company. Yeah. Uh, one of my biggest things like, against it is like, if you want someone who's a hustler, who's a killer, who can like crush it in Facebook ads, but yet you're expecting that type of person to want that type of opportunity is probably not the case. Right. But right. The, the, how, how do we, but again, like, I mean, even us, right. We've had people that I'm sure there's people that think even heights suck, you know, because of whatever experience they had. Right. And then they come on, they use us and then they have to leave like a week later. It doesn't happen often, but maybe it's their fault. Maybe it's our fault, but how do we, how do we judge that expertise? I think white label is one of them. I think, I think instead of like, Hey, I'm not the expert. I don't know that you're the expert. Well, at least if this is a white label company, I expect them to, right? You see that a lot in, in the clothing industry, right? Like instead of me going to hire a seamstress or I don't know how to do it, let me go hire a distributor distributor that's going to build it up, right? And so I think there's some, definitely some ways in, but it goes right into this, right? Like do I hire with for expertise or do I hire for potential and how yeah. to judge that? Yeah, I mean, one area, this is not the silver bullet or anything, but you know, obviously a candidate's resume kind of showcases, you know, where that expertise lies. I mean, are they jumping from job to job? Are they, or are they holding on to a role and they're progressing in the role, right? Like, are they, are they showcasing that they're, they're someone that, that, that will stick with it, you know, because we know that on the average, it takes well, hopefully what, three years to really build, build, you know, expertise in something and, and, yeah can actually demonstrate value and give value, give, give more back to the organization uh, than, than what they get. And so yeah. are they sticking around for that long, long amount of time? And um, what are their, what do their clients say? What does a recommendation say on, on their LinkedIn profile? Are they even maintaining that? Like there's ways that you can, you can, that you as a candidate uh, can, can showcase your, your expertise. And then there's ways as a recruiter, you can find that. And I think it's, yeah. it's, it's important on both ends. And on the flip side, one of the things that we do at Height, what I, I recommend to people, I think it's our biggest indicator is our video of awesomeness. So because we're an entrepreneurial company, we want everyone to have some heat in the game. We want people that we have to be creative. Like we, we have, you know, we're up to 90 people now. We got pretty much someone for everything, but we're always trying to innovate it. And can you create things in your hiring process that force innovation? So what we've done is we, we, we have the video of awesomeness, right? And so we expect that most people don't know how to create a really good video outside of using their iPhone, right? And so what do we do? You have to do a video. There's only two requirements, three things that make you awesome and three things that make us awesome, reasons you want to work with us, right? And we force them to be creative. We tell them straight up, like, if this is great, your chances dramatically increase of you coming. But that video tells us so much, right, Kevin? Because it's like, yeah, do they do it yeah. quick and it sucks? Okay, well, that tells you something. Do they take forever, but it's amazing, right? And so depending on the pit position, you may value one over the other, right? Is it something where they just hold up their phone and just talk to the camera? Or is it something where they went and got their friends and there were people involved and they got their family involved? And they like, you can tell so much for this video because there's no parameters. Here's the job. How, how, to what extent are you going to do it? Right. And so you can create things like that, that now try to push out the potential, right? It's sometimes it's hard to push out the experience, but you can push, just push out the, the, the potential. In fact, you know, 20% of the people we interview don't even do it. 
Well, mm, it's because it's tough. It's harder, yeah, right? Yeah. I say 20, maybe it's less than that. I don't have the latest update. It's, <laughs> it's definitely gone down over a year since we've gotten, you know, in the first, in the first, uh, maybe 20 hires, we're like, who's the crap are you guys? I'm not doing this now. <laughs> now it's probably a little bit better, but, but it, it's a filter, right? It's a, yeah, it's a filter yeah. to make sure that we're trying to hire people that figure it out, you know? Yeah. And, I'll and add they ask to- tons of questions. How long yeah. should this be? I don't know. What should I use? Yeah. I don't know. How does it need to be filmed? I have no idea. You know, whatever you want to do, let's see it, you know? And so it gets interesting. Yeah. I super interesting. I love, I love that. I think innovation, well, first like innovation is not efficient. I think, I think it trial and error, like what works, what doesn't. But I, I think that's a really cool way to, to really understand a candidate because that, you know, yeah. Uh, you know, I listened to a, a something the other day where it's like, you know, someone can look great on paper and then someone can interview really, really well. But when you give them the space to be creative, like all bets are off. Like you can't really fake that. You know, you can't, yeah. you, you, it has to be authentic. And the side benefit yeah. that you get, the side benefit that you get is you're, where you're able to showcase the brand as a place where you can bring your whole self. You can bring, it's a, it's a psychological safe environment that you can bring your authentic yeah. self. And I think people from a hiring perspective, if I'm in that, if I'm in that position, like that's attractive to me, like, wow. Like they want me to kind of, they want to, sh- they want to see who I am yeah. and they're giving me the runway to the freedom to kind of like show you what that is. I mean, you can get, to, yeah. you can find some st- stars, you know, doing that that way. And I think it's a really great idea. And not, not to, I mean, for us, there's an even, and you can still the idea, I don't care, but um, for us, it's an even added benefit because the vision here is that a year from now, two years, three years from now, and you can even right now, you go on YouTube and you search for high digital, there's like a thousand videos on people wanting to work for us. You know, what does that tell you about that company if mm-hmm. that's that's mm-hmm. what comes up, right? And right. so- uh, it, 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 it really supports what our, what our vision is and what our mission is, which is create a thousand jobs, right. That empower people. And so let's, let's flip it around though. And, Cause this will even help from, I think, from a hiring standpoint is understanding what are the, what is the talent doing and what that talent should do. Right. So, so here I am, I just graduated college. I want to work for Facebook. I want to work for Google and we'll go be, be with, uh, be with Kevin. Right. But I have no experience. Right. What are some things that I should be doing that offset that experience to help make sure that I'm going to get that job that showcase yeah. my potential? Yeah, yeah. This is a great question. And, you know, I wish I had, again, all the, the full formula, you know, it, it, I think one, it's, it, it, there, there's, I think there's a couple of like key steps that I think that it's, that are so important. Um, and, you know, saying this just like as, as an individual where I've seen, I've seen resumes in all, in all my stops, in all my stops where someone has done strong, strong academics. They've showcased that they are the valedictorian of this and top of this. And from an academics point of view, there's no question that they were able to excel in university, none, but that's it. They don't, they, they haven't taken steps to become a more well-rounded individual by volunteering their time or joining a club or doing, or I mean, just even just even the small part-time jobs that, that, that can help you, you know, make ends meet, you know, as you're going through university yeah. and college. And, you know, it's a red flag for me, you know, when I, when I don't see anything outside of work. And I think mm-hmm. when you showcase that you're willing to not just do what your job is, which is to, you know, earn your degree, if that's your path or in some sort of certification, uh, if you're not willing to do things outside of that, then that tells me that you're not willing to go out of your comfort zone, that you're not willing to put yourself out there to make somebody's life better or, mm. or potentially um, add value to, to your community. And so I think the first thing from a candidate perspective is that you know, take a long look at your resume and like, hey, what are you doing to benefit others outside of your day to day? You know, what and, and you'll find that when you give out, when you give, give back some of that energy to either a nonprofit or otherwise, you'll almost get more than that in return. You know, you'll get, you get skills, you'll, you'll get networks, you'll, you'll build some of those maybe leadership skills that maybe you don't 
have it from a resume perspective. And I think that's super, super important. So I think that's number one is like finding ways to round out your resume with things outside of your day to day. It's almost like if you don't have experience, you need to create experience. Yeah. yeah <laughs> through, through, but through, yeah. you know, through other yeah. things, like, dude, I, I graduated with a 2.1 GPA, 2.1 GPA. That's insane. That's insanely low. Like literally my dad, my sophomore year said, dude, I'm, I'm not paying for this anymore, bro. Like if you want to keep going, you can go get your, <laughs> use your own money, you know, and rightfully so. Right. Like I hate, but I had a full-time job all the way through college. Right. And I learned those, those skills. Right. And so, um, um, there's so many, for, for me, I mean, maybe it's, I want to hire people that are passionate about anything. Mm-hmm. I don't like mm-hmm. if they're passionate about dogs and they're willing to, you know, if they're willing to get committed to that, right. And be able to work, I have my job because it gives me money and then I can help dogs. Right. Like, I just want to see some type of passion. And it, it, for me, the biggest thing is laziness, right? Like if, if, if there's the opposite of this, right. And hopefully potential doesn't mean laziness, right. Because if, if, if they don't, or the, the lack of experience doesn't mean laziness, right. You're looking for people that were active doing things, right. Moving doing, around, you know? Right. Doing things, not satisfied with the status quo, you know, with that's right. One who want, who, who don't want to stay in one, like in terms of like, they, they want, they want to do something meaningful. They want to have purpose in their, in their, in their, in their life. And I think if you just do one thing and you're not exploring other things, that, yeah. that it, it becomes something that that becomes a red flag. I'll give you one story on this and I know we can move on, but like, uh, I don't know if you know this, but when I was, uh, when was this 2013 and oppor- I've had a dream to be a hockey coach. I've had a dream to, to, to sit behind the bench of a hockey team. Sure enough, the local high school in Ann Arbor, Michigan, they were hiring for a volunteer, volunteer assistant head hockey coach. And I was like, wow, this is great. Well, you know, I'm, I have never played uh, high school or college hockey. It's all been like recreational leagues and adult leagues, um, you know, roller hockey, as well as like ice hockey. But I said, you know what? I love hockey. Let's give it a shot. And so I give my resume. I was prepared, suited up as if it was a real, like, like real job interview, went to the head coach who had oodles of experience. Right. And said, Hey, like, here's my resume. Like, you know, Oh, you work here. Like, Oh, this is great. Do you have any actual like hockey experience? And I go, well, no, but I'm really good at, at NHL, uh, you know, NHL, you know, 20, 2017 on my PS4. I'm really good at that. <laughs> had a laugh about that. Uh, I played a lot of recreational hockey. We won the, we won our championship two years in a row and there's nothing. And I've worked in the sport. I've worked in the sport. So that was my only like real experience, not coaching, like tangentially, I was, I had hockey experience and that was it. But he could tell that I had passion for the sport and he could tell Uh that I was coachable and he could tell that I was willing to learn that I was okay with like spending my free time willing to learn. And he gave me the job. And even though it was free, it was the most fulfilling, fulfilling, one of the most fulfilling jobs I've ever had. And it's listed as volunteer experience on my resume. And now it's there. It's there forever as leadership experience, you know? And so yeah. I went out and got it. Um, and it was so fun. It was so great. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I think the other thing too, from a candidate perspective, just to round it out, I think is just being prepared. I mean, if you, mm. if you know, you have gaps, you know, in your experience, if you look at your resume critically, you know, and just, you know, by the way, you should always try to find a coach or somebody else to help you look look at your resume objectively and give you feedback. I think it's always a good thing to be in that practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's being prepared with questions like, hey, you know, if you're interviewing for a role that requires people management, you know, and they, they ask you that question and they're like, hey, can you tell me a little bit more about your leadership experience? Well, what do you say? You have to prepare for that question. So say, hey, you know what, yeah. my experience... I don't have a lot of leadership experience, but I've done this, this, and this to close that gap. To so I think yeah. some people think that the, the gap in experience is a is something that you can't overcome. I believe you can overcome it by showcasing mm-hmm. that you're you're making efforts to close that gap in your own time. And I think that uh, the optics of that speak actually much louder than the experience itself. Mm. Yeah. 
I think there, you know, as a as an organization, there's rare at, at height, at least from my experience, and the other, you know, we, and we've we've I've been a part of a couple Inc. 500 companies, right? The this balance is is huge, right? And understanding when to do it, and when to hire experience, and when to hire potential, um, and, and it's uh, and it's ever changing, I think as well, you know. And so, it's tough, man. It's been really tough for us, um, and even even in developing, right? As we're we have a position, we have a lot of engineers, but we're wanting to innovate that position more, right? How do I how do I create that? How do I do I bring someone on from the outside, right? And that I mean that has a lot of repercussions in and of itself because there's not an opportunity there, and so. This is tough, man. It's really, really tough. I like, I really like the ideas uh, behind an experience, behind creating experience. I, I, I really think you have to have experience. You just have to. It doesn't have to be directly in the in the product, right? Right. Um, and then I think there's certain things like for me when I'm when I'm looking for experience, it has typically it doesn't have as much to do with the technical. It has more to do with the mental, with the a decision-making experience with the ability to read people experience, you know, like that type of stuff. I mean, like HR is one of those, like to, in my mind, in my opinion, someone who has 40 years of experience in human resources and recruiting has a huge edge on someone who has one year just because of the ability to read people. I also think that most of the women in my life can read people. Like my wife will like rewrite through you. She'll be like, no, he's full of crap. No, don't hire him. And I, I'm like terrible at it, but you just have to, you know, there, there's just things that you have to know. Uh, right. And so, but I definitely think the technical side, uh, can be taught pretty quick. And, uh, and there's a ton of resources, right? PPC, you know, we, we have a four week training at height. So we're obviously hiring for potential not, but Google ads has their own free training as well. Right. If you get someone who's hustling and you say, you know what? Here's the training. Go do it for two weeks. Call me back. And if you finish this, you get certified. Maybe we're going, you know? And so can you create ways that prove that desire and prove that passion? And I think it can lead to a lot more, um, it dramatically increases your ability, right? And right. today with YouTube, dude, there's nothing. Like, nope. you don't have, I mean, dude, I've had several people at height get the job because they said in the interview, like, yeah, I'm actually already AdWords certified. I went and did it myself. That's initiative, baby. Like, okay, you want this, you know, you're willing to go do it in your own time. And I think it's huge, bro. It's huge. It's exciting, cool. dude. It's exciting. Yeah. Anything else you got for us? No, I mean, I think that's, that's the main crux of it. I think it's, I think it's just important to find the balance. I mean, I know that, I yeah. hope that doesn't sound like a cliche and a throwaway statement, but you know, it's important, yes, you know, to hire for experience, you know, during a certain stage of a company. Um, if you're starting something new, yeah, you want to have somebody who can hit the ground running. I mean, the, the lowers the risk of that hiring manager. I get it. Yeah. But we should also be, we should also look towards the future. Like the world yeah. that we live in today is different than what we lived in in 20 years ago. And so when you're hiring for potential, you're insulating yourself from the yeah. past and, and, and making those mistakes and, and hopefully innovating for the future. And so it's incredibly important to look out for both when you can. Yeah, I love it. This right here is one of the most important things you'll do in the company, especially in the early days. Those first 10 hires is just, oh man, at height, we wouldn't be, I mean, we call them our founders, you know, like it, we, we wouldn't be where we're at without those guys, those men. I think they were all men. Our first 10 hires were men, actually. And then our next 40 hires were women. But those yeah. men, uh, <laughs> uh, we wouldn't be where we are with without them. And uh, yeah. and it, it's so it's so crucial. So I love it, bro. Yeah. I appreciate your time, dude. Your of energy, course. dude. You're one of the smartest guys I know. And, uh, and, and I'm humbled that uh, we've been able to have so many conversations over the years. You've helped us so much at height grow and uh, grow and scale just uh, – feeding off your wisdom and insights and experience. And so I appreciate it um, a, a ton, brother. A Absolutely. Ton. And just, just so you know, and just so it's for the record on this podcast, like it's, it's two ways. It's both ways. I learn, I learn from you too. So it's not, it's definitely not a one way street. So I appreciate you and your mentorship and your guidance as well. 
I appreciate it, brother. Awesome. I hope you have a good day, guys. If you uh, enjoyed this podcast, definitely let us know. Make sure you're in our free Facebook group, right? Digital Agency Hacker. Check it out. We've got several thousand people in there. We've got a whole entire free platform, actually, of stuff. Snapshots. We've got funnels. We've got courses. we got everything. It's 100% free. All of it. All of it. Make sure you join digitalacyhacker.com. Hope you guys have an incredible day. Be good. Be safe. As always, work hard and make sure you end the day happy every single time. See you guys.